Welcome to the journey of a lifetime, where every word counts, every verse speaks, and every story unfolds to reveal the timeless wisdom of the ages. I'm your host, Lynn Falconer, and I welcome you to this episode on the Joyful Alchemist podcast. I want to thank you for subscribing, and I ask you to please do share with friends and family. In today's episode of our 365-day journey, we close out our reading of the Book of Numbers with analysis of the last four chapters which comprise chapters 33 through 36. So the Book of Numbers, nestled within the Old Testament, is a story. And that story provides us with an enriching insight into the journey of the Israelites. And it also connects us with the divine instruction and the moral guidance that was imparted to the Israelites by God through his messenger Moses. Chapters 33 through 36 offer that deeper insight into their journey through the wilderness and the eventual establishment of their societal structures. So let's embark on this journey through these chapters. And as we go, let's unravel their significance and also extract some timeless lessons that may be applicable to our contemporary life. Before I go to chapter 33 through 36, I want to do a brief recap here of chapter 32. Chapter 32 highlights the importance of unity and collective responsibility within a community. And as we listened to in the previous episode, despite having personal interests, the tribes of Reuben and Gad recognized the greater goal of securing the promised land for all Israelites. So this teaches us the value of prioritizing communal well-being over individual desires, a lesson that is and can be applied to today's interconnected world. However, this does not mean that we forsake or discard our own dreams and visions and goals, whether it is our own individual desires or that of our immediate and collective family. It is important to always keep in mind the following five-point test for the vision or desire that we have for ourselves. And this five-point test is something I learned as a life coach in my training with Mary Morrissey, and we can apply it to make sure that we are in alignment with God's plan for us and with the greater good of our community, especially of our family and loved ones. So here are the five questions that you can ask regarding your vision and dream. Number one is, does it give me life? Number two, does it align with my purpose and core values? Number three, is there good in this for others? Number four, will it cause me to grow? And number five is, do I need help from a higher power? And when you answer these questions, I invite you to be truthful and honest with yourself. That always provides the best results. So let's move on now and continue to chapter 33. This chapter serves as a retrospective recounting of the various stops and stages of the Israelites' journey from Egypt to the plains of Moab. Now, Moses meticulously lists each location, reminding the Israelites of God's faithfulness throughout their arduous journey. The chapter begins with the words, These are the stages of the people of Israel when they went out of the land of Egypt by their companies under the leadership of Moses and Aaron. So when we analyze this chapter, we can see that it empathizes the importance of remembering one's history and journey. By reflecting on their past experiences, the Israelites gain a deeper appreciation for God's providence and his guidance. And similarly, in our lives, reflecting on our personal journey can provide clarity, also gratitude, as well as insight into our future path. Then in chapter 34, God instructs Moses to delineate 
the boundaries of the Promised Land. These boundaries are to serve as the inheritance for the twelve tribes of Israel once they conquer Canaan. Now the chapter outlines the precise borders of the land from the Mediterranean Sea in the west to the Jordan River in the east. And the chapter begins as follows. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the people of Israel, and say to them, When you enter the land of Canaan, this is the land that shall fall to you for an inheritance. The land of Canaan is defined by its borders. So this chapter underscores the importance of boundaries and order in society. Just as God sets clear boundaries for the promised land, we as individuals and also the communities that we are a part of benefit from establishing healthy boundaries in our lives. Boundaries promote security as well as respect and fairness and it fosters harmonious relationships and sustainable growth. In chapter 35 we learn of the allocation of cities for the Levites and the establishment of cities of refuge. The Levites, who serve as priests and caretakers of the tabernacle, are granted 48 cities dispersed throughout the land. Additionally, six cities of refuge are designated to provide sanctuary for individuals who unintentionally commit manslaughter. This chapter begins with these words. The Lord spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho, saying, Command the people of Israel to give to the Levites some of the inheritance in their possession as cities for them to dwell in. Now when we look at this chapter and analyze our Lord's words and commands to Moses, we can identify the importance of justice, compassion, and mercy within society. By providing cities of refuge, the Israelites demonstrate their commitment to fairness and protecting the innocent. In today's world, we are reminded of the importance of protecting our own space and respecting the space of others, as well as offering support to those in need, fostering a culture of empathy and accountability. It is also important to remember that empathy, responsibility, accountability are all characteristics that work both ways. In our society today, it is in vital for us that each individual and our communities at large own the responsibilities and accountabilities from the actions we undertake and that those who are identified as in need, for example children, whether our own children or those within our community, also single parents as well as families who may be struggling due to unforeseen events and circumstances, that they are provided with the support they need and in turn contribute to the community, similar to the barter systems of old. For example, for receiving food, housing, etc., individuals and families can contribute by caring for the elderly, educating and schooling of children, as well as other adults, and so forth. Now, in the final chapter of the Book of Numbers, chapter 36, it addresses concerns raised by the daughters of Zelophehad regarding inheritance laws. They express worry that if they marry outside their tribe, their portion of land will be transferred to another tribe, potentially diminishing their family's inheritance. So in response, Moses institutes a law stipulating that women that inherit property must marry within their tribe to preserve the integrity of their inheritance. The chapter begins with the following words. The heads of the father's houses of the clan of the people of Gilead, the son of Maker, son of Manasseh, from the clans of the people of Joseph, came near and spoke before Moses and before the chiefs, the heads of the father's houses of the people of Israel. The chapter addresses the complexities of inheritance, marriage and familial legacy. While the specific laws may not directly apply to our society today, the underlying principles of preserving heritage and ensuring fairness 
in inheritance resonate across cultures as well as in time periods. Now it prompts us to reflect on the significance of familial bonds as well as the responsibilities associated with preserving our heritage for future generations. The preserving of our inheritance is not just an individual or familial responsibility, but it is also, in my opinion, carries a serious communal responsibility where we as communities collectively must come together to preserve the records of the past, whatever form those records may take, for future generations. One reason I believe we need to do this is in an attempt to ensure that we individually and collectively do not consistently repeat the mistakes of the past. So in conclusion, for chapters 33 to 36 of the Book of Numbers, it offers a wealth of insights as well as teachings that transcend time and culture, like we've experienced with most of the Bible we've read so far. From the importance of collective responsibility and unity to the significance of justice and inheritance, these chapters provide a blueprint for navigating life's complexities with faith wisdom and compassion. Now as we journey through our own wilderness experiences, may we draw inspiration from the ancient wisdom contained within these sacred texts, finding guidance and strength for our modern day challenges. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Joyful Alchemist podcast. I hope you found inspiration, insight, and a touch of magic in today's conversation. Remember, the journey of self-discovery is ongoing, and each step we take brings us closer to unlocking the alchemy within ourselves. If you've enjoyed today's discussion, please consider leaving a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback fuels our passion to continue exploring the transformative power of joy and alchemy. Join us next time as we delve deeper into the mysteries of the heart, mind and soul and continue this 365 day journey through the Bible. Until then, may your days be filled with joy, your heart with gratitude and your spirit with endless possibilities. Keep seeking keep smiling, and keep alchemizing. This is your host, Lynn Falconer, signing off.